In this video, we are going to look at Unit 8, Lesson 7, which is on related events. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to determine if two events are independent or dependent. The first event that we're going to look at is on page 315, and it involves a bag of crayons with eight crayons, one of each of these colors listed, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, pink, maroon, and purple. Go ahead and answer the two questions on 315 and then come back to the video for us to discuss. The events in number one says that a person chooses a crayon at random out of the bag, uses it for a little bit, and then returns the crayon or puts the crayon back in the bag. A second person comes to get a crayon now out of the bag and selects at random. What's the probability that the second person selects the yellow crayon? So now the bag has been reset. We still have all of these crayons in it. There is one yellow crayon out of the eight crayons in the bag. So the probability that that person selects the yellow is one out of eight. In problem number two, a person chooses a crayon at random from the bag and walks off with the crayon to use it. A second person comes to get a crayon and chooses a crayon at random. What is the probability that the second person gets the yellow crayon now? So remember that the one crayon has been selected and it has not been returned. So there are only seven crayons in the bag now. And let's say that the first person did not walk off with the yellow crayon. So they could have selected any crayon that wasn't yellow. So the yellow is still in the bag. So the second person's probability could be one out of seven. Or that first person could have walked off with the yellow crayon. So there is no chance that the second person could select the yellow because it's no longer in the bag. So either of these could be the probability. We're not sure because we don't know what the first crayon was that was drawn. So what's the difference in these two questions? So the difference is in that question number one, the first selection did not impact the second selection. But in the second question, it did because it mattered because the person walked away with the crayon and did not replace it into the bag. So which event is considered independent and which one is considered dependent? The first one is independent since the two selections did not impact each other. And the second one is considered dependent since it matters what happened in the first selection to determine the probability of the second. So this is the idea behind dependent and independent events. If the likelihood is impacted, then the events are dependent. So if one event's likelihood is impacted on whether the other event happens, those are dependent events, like drawing a crayon and not replacing it. Independent events are when one event's likelihood is not impacted by the others. So like flipping a coin and rolling a die, doesn't matter what happens on either one, they're not impacted. Or drawing a crayon and then putting it back in the bag and drawing another crayon because the probabilities or the likelihoods reset themselves. So dependent events impact each other, independent events do not. We're going to take a look at a little game here to um, look at some dependent, independent events. So let me explain the game. So there are three doors which you can see. Behind one of the doors is a prize. So there's going to, it's a host and a contestant. So the host knows where the prize is. The contestant does not. So the contestant gets to choose a door that they believe the prize is behind. And if they're right, they win. So let's pretend that this contestant chose door number one. Now the host, knowing where the prize is, reveals behind one of the two non-selected doors where there is not a prize. So the host in this case is gonna say, all right, let me show you behind door number three, there was not a prize. 
So now we know the prize is for sure between either the door that the contestant selected or the other door. So then the host is going to allow the contestant to switch doors if they would like. And this is actually, we're going to find out, is this a dependent event or independent event? So you can decide what you think. And we're going to actually simulate this game on a website so that you can see and look at the um, likelihood. And then we'll come back to this and decide, do you want to switch doors or do you not want to? So go ahead and Google Monty Hall simulation and select this first link where it says Math Warehouse. And I will show you here what it looks like. So on this game, what you're going to do is um, behind one of these doors is a car, behind the other two whoops, is a goat. And so you pick a door and it's going to keep track right here what's happening. How many cars do you get, aka wins? How many goats do you get, aka loss? So select a door. So click on a door and then they're going to show you one of the losing doors. Now you can either keep your choice by clicking keep choice or you can click to change and select the other door. So I'm gonna change and that meant I won, okay? So then you get to play again. So select any door, they're gonna show you a loser. You can select to change doors or keep your door. So I kept the door and I lost. Play again, decide to change or keep and keep doing this and selecting whichever you want. Do you want to change it or keep it? That's up to you, okay? And see how many times you win or lose based on changing. Play it up to, play it 50 times and then come back to the video. All right, so I'm gonna do a simulation here of if we do this 100 times and we keep the choice, okay? So let's do an instant. So we're, this is going to play this game, select a random door and keep the choice and see how many times we win and how many times we lose. So here's um, the results. So I'm just going to take this and put it into our lesson to record the results. All right, then let's do this again. And let's do it if we change the choice. So right now we won 31% of the time and we lost 69% of the time. So let's change our choice. Now we're going to select a door and then each time they reveal, we're going to change. So this time we ended up changing the choice and we ended up winning quite a bit more. So this one, let's keep the choice. And the other one was to change. So is this telling us that these events are independent or dependent? And it appears that keeping the choice makes you have less of a chance of winning and changing the choice, you have more. Because here you only had 31% chance of winning when you kept your choice. And after they revealed the door, um, and we changed it, we actually ended up winning, it looks like two out of three times. So we're winning more often. So is choosing which door to open at the start of the game dependent on anything? So did it matter what door you chose initially? No, because you were just selecting one out of three doors, you had no information. So is choosing to switch the door dependent on anything? And it is, okay? It feels kind of like it's not, but in actuality it is, and why? So we had these three doors and we selected the first one. So what is the chance that this is the correct door? So the likelihood that this is the right door is a one in three chance. This also means 
that the uh, that the option of this one being a losing door is two out of three. So it's more likely that we chose a losing door than we chose a winning door. So once they reveal that this is a loser, the likelihood that this one was the winner is much more likely. It's way more likely that we lost initially than it is that we won. So now that they've revealed a losing door, it is highly, well, a higher chance that this is the winning door. So the first event does impact it, or sorry, not the first event, the second event of them showing us a losing door tells us that this is the more likely option that this would be the winning door. All right, let's discuss what we talked about in this lesson. So the first thing that we wanted to do was be able to determine whether two events are independent or dependent. So independent events are when the probability of one does not impact the other. And dependent is where they do impact each other. So the first event directly impacts the second event's probability. So in this situation, there are 10 different names written on slips of paper that are placed in a hat. Your teacher picks out one name from the hat, places it on the desk. Then the teacher picks another name out of the hat. Are these events dependent or independent? And because your teacher doesn't replace the name, those events are dependent because there's 10 names in the bag, the first choice, and then in the second choice, there's only nine names left. So that's going to directly impact that probability of the second choice. If your teacher were to replace the name, then it would be independent events. But the fact that they kept it on their desk means that it's dependent. Um, you may also remember hearing in science class about independent and dependent variables. So how are these related to independent and dependent events? So a dependent variable, okay, is something that is impacted by the independent variable. So for instance, if we have um, boiling water, the temperature that water boils at is impacted by the pressure. So the amount of pressure is independent. So this could change based on you know, wherever your atmosphere is at. So this is the independent variable and that directly impacts the temperature at which the water boils. So this is the dependent variable. Pressure can change based on environment and then that tells you the temperature that the water would boil at. All right, so here's a cool down that you can try after this lesson. If you're struggling with it, make sure that you reach out to your teacher.